Welcome to MMT Chats. This episode is brought to you by Iskar with new ideas for machining intelligently. Hey, MMT followers, I'm Christina Fugis with Mulmaking Technology, and my guest on today's MMT chat is Zach Glasscock with Action Mold and Machining. And Zach is one of Mulmaking Technology's 30 under 30 honorees. So first off, hello, Zach, and congratulations. Hi, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so I have to start off, I gotta ask, how does it feel to not only be nominated, but to get Get to be one of the 30, because I actually got a pretty darn good response. So we had to narrow it down and you got yeah. to be one of the 30. Oh, well, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, hi, Greg. Sorry, Greg just walked in. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it's really an honor. Um, I know that throughout my whole career so far, throughout my college career and up to this point, this is what I've been pushing for. Um, this is what I've been wanting to do. I wanted to get into this field. I wanted to design molds. I wanted to be hands-on. Oh, wow. So this is this is like a dream, I guess. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So before we go further, because I want to dive into that a little bit, what is your current position? So my current position on my business card is the additive specialist as okay. well as a CMM technician. Okay. So a dual. All right. So all right, let's give everybody listening or watching a little snapshot of how you got to where you are, especially since you said this was something that you've always thought about doing. That's the first time I've heard that. So yeah, yeah give me a little background on your journey, like the background, even your education-wise, family, friends, and manufacturing. Talk about that. Absolutely. So uh, it all kind of started out in high school. Um, with the high school that I went to, they offered engineering classes that I could take. Mm. So I took mm. just about every single one of them. And then halfway through, I, ending my sophomore year, I said, okay, I want to get more hands-on. Um, and so then I started taking more machining classes. Hmm. Um, through that venture, I was able to get another co-op during high school where I actually worked in a uh, machine factory as a machinist for a company, okay. actually producing products for their suppliers. Hmm. Um, so that got me very hands-on in the machine side of things. Okay. Um, and then once I got into college, I was debating on what kind of field I wanted to get into, but I knew that I wanted to do something in the realms of machines and I knew okay. I wanted to design. And manufacturing engineering is, that's my degree and it's, it just okay. fits me perfectly. So, so even when you were younger, even prior to high school, did you always have that kind of an you know, problem solving is when I think of engineering and working with your hands, you've always been that way? Loved it, yeah. yeah. Always just and been nobody, hands on. How about the family? Are, do you, is there people within your family are, that, that are in manufacturing so you were exposed to it? Uh, so my dad is actually works, he works in construction. Okay. And so that's how I got my first kind of experiences with hand on yep. practices with actual tools and that those tools transferred to really big machines. Okay, yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. So what's interesting about you too is on your business card, you're the additive specialist. So you're young and additive manufacturing, probably as you've learned, um, it's not something new, but within the realm of mold manufacturing, right? It's still like kind of just taking off. People are really starting to learn and share as Action Mold has working with them. Yeah. But how did you fall into that aspect, that particular technology within mold making? Absolutely. So um, I believe I began end of, again, end of sophomore year in college. Um, I got a, another co-op at a company located out in Battle Creek, Denzel Manufacturing. Okay. Um, and I worked yeah. in their tool and die trade, tool and die department. Um, so I got exposed to it. We had hmm. just started kicking out some conformal cooled inserts using additive. Okay. So I kind of got my feet wet just being kind of with that group. Hmm. I didn't do any of the design work, but I was watching and learning and it yeah. really, really interested me. Um, so then when I got to my senior year, I was still with the company and they offered me a senior design proposal hmm. utilizing additive manufacturing for venting applications okay. in molds, in their tools. Wow. Um, so luckily with that experience, it was actually 
my group partnered with Action Mold. So I knew Greg even before I got hired in. I've been working wow. with him. Um, and so that was, that's just kind of how I got my feet wet into the field. So, all right, let's look at what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. And up into this point, what would you say is your number one challenge? I think my number one challenge is, like you were saying, this is this technology is so new mm -hmm. um, in our field, in our mold making field, uh, that you have to put push through old mindsets <laughs> of traditional ways. This is how you do it. This is how you cool a tool. This is how you vent a tool. Yeah, cut and bland. But that's just not the case anymore. You can utilize this technology, and it can give you benefits that no other traditional method can. It can allow you to do crazy things like put these crazy geometries inside of a tool for cooling, or in some applications that we've done, we were actually printing porous steels that yeah. we can vent through. And there's no other way to do that. Yeah. It's thinking outside the box, which is always intriguing to me because when I think of the average mold builder, it's in them to do what they got to do. Like they're constantly figuring out stuff and they're get, they're innovative, right? Their minds work that way. But when it comes to especially additive, there's just kind of like a wall up where they, they resort to that traditional way. When I don't think of that, this field as traditional in their yeah. thinking, They're, they have to be innovative to find that solution. I mean, it's amazing some of the things that you guys come up with to solve a problem. And additive is just another tool in that toolbox that they should always bring to the table as a possible solution. Not that it's the solution for every job, right? But yeah. it should always be considered. So Absolutely. It, it, Interesting. It's interesting. All right. So, all right. In that same vein, what has been your proudest moment or would you consider your top accomplishment since you've entered the workforce? Um, so one of the things that I'm most proud of is a project that Greg, uh, my manager, uh, kind of got me involved with. He had this concept of being able to repair broken tools mm -hmm. with okay. additive. So with that, um, He's a very busy guy, so I kind of just was like, hey, Greg, let me do this. I can figure this out. So I went around our shop, asked a lot of questions, um, got in touch with a few of our mold makers, and I was able to find a part that was being replaced because there was a, a miscut, just something happened, and we needed to make a new one. So they were just going to throw this other one out. So I was like, okay, can I have that? And they said, yeah, take it. We don't need it anymore. So what I did to it is I evaluated it and said, okay, I can use this and take it and let's say repair it. So mm -hmm. on this component, there were about multi, there were probably seven to eight small towers. Um, okay. And in the molding field, when you have, when your plastic flows into a deep pocket, not only because it's a tall, a very tall tower to pocket your area out. So your tip of that tower is gonna be very, very hot. But okay. they were so small that you couldn't fit a line through it <laughs> traditionally. And then also with having that deep pocket as plastic flows through, basically you'll have two flow fronts meeting, colliding, yeah. and that's where you need a vent, but you can't, you couldn't put a vent in it. So <laughs> what I did is I took it I modified the existing seal to accept two water lines per tower. Okay. Um, and so I was able to print on top of it a conformally cooled channel, as well as print another line that goes through the middle that was kind of attached to a porous region on top. So not wow. only were you cooling an area that you couldn't ever do before, but you're also venting an area that you could wow. never do before. Wow. And this is with the Renishaw technology, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Wow. So, okay, what happened once you did that? How do you, wh where do you go with that within the shop? Who do you show? And so it's, that's a funny story. I, uh, <laughs> I was super proud. So I was like, okay, I got to show this. I got to show this to everyone. I got to show them what we did. Um, so I went around to all of our project managers. I showed it to one guy. He said, oh, that's awesome. Brought it out to another guy. He said the same thing. Brought it out to another guy big burly dude um, <laughs> said, hey, take a look at this. And he said, 
oh, can I see that? And I said, uh, yeah, you, you can have it. Um, first thing he does, he walks over to a tool bench, grabs a hammer, uh, and just gives it just whacks it right on top of one of those towers because yep. his thought that the material, the base material was an H13 or a P20. Okay. And our material on top of it is an H13 like material. Yeah. So he was he wanted to see if there was actually going to be any shear between those the bonding layers. And luckily that thing didn't break. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. He proved he proved it out for you, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. You could say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Taking a hammer to it. Wow. That's awesome. I love when it's a it's great that your accomplishment is a project base. Like something common that I'm seeing with all these under 30s that I'm interviewing is you all have that um craving or just this energy about you where you just want to take it on and figure it out. And I think that's what you need in this business. And that's how you're gonna grow so yeah. yeah i think that's Absolutely. awesome all right let's talk about preconceived notions of mold manufacturing so when you there are as you know someone that doesn't know about it or they think they know it so there's a lot of misconceptions out there is there anyone in particular that you had that when you finally got into we'll say action mold or even denzo where you were before that um you that myth was busted you know you you don't you're like wow it actually isn't that way that you could share I would say it's, again, I, when I first went into it, it was okay, these guys that are making the tools, they, they are, how do I want to put it? They <laughs> are innovative. They want to fix things and they have these crazy minds inside of their heads to be able to do things that no one else would think to do. Yep. Um, and so when I first got into it, that's kind of how I viewed it, that there were these guys that could do anything. But when I got further and further into it, it's that there's, they're doing what they were taught, but they haven't learned the new technology. So that's back to additive. They yep. haven't gotten their feet wet. They haven't gotten exposure to see what it's capable of doing for them. And so that's where I kind of think my mindset really okay. kind of differs. It surprised you. Yeah, and it yeah. surprised you about them. So how do you, as an under 30 year old too, and I can see this being an issue with some shop cultures, not everybody, mm -hmm. but there is that next generation and the seasoned generation. There could be a little, you know, depending on how you approach it, because I know every, for the most part, you guys and gals respect that generation because they're the ones that build it. But I can imagine you, somebody younger coming in saying, you got to try this. Yeah, 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 kid. Like we, we got this under control. So how, what's your approach? What's your strategy? So let's say I propose a conformally cooled insert to one of our project managers. And let's say one of these project managers has a very traditional mindset and actually has a tooling background. So he knows his stuff. He knows what he can do. Yep. But like I said, he hasn't gotten his feet wet to the additive field. So when I say, hey, let's try this. I know what can fix your problem. They kind of shy away from it. Hmm. Well, do you think it's a do you think it's a point where they think they're going to lose their. I don't know, like it's going to take the place of something that they do. I mean, that's, that's like, you know, I. It's like insecurity almost in a sense, because I would imagine like when five axis, think of all the technologies that have been introduced over the years. And a lot of these guys have been witness to that too. This is just another one, quite frankly, really, but it's hard to get that through. It's hard yeah. to get that through. So that, that's an interesting challenge that you have being somebody younger and being so enthusiastic and passionate about incorporating this. Although I will say, and I told this to um, Greg when I interviewed them before, like action molds on it. Like the fact that they're sharing and getting the word out, they're doing their part to make this not seem so out of the box, right? Yeah. They're just yeah. embracing it and testing it and practicing and, and wanting people to collaborate with them to help grow this and see what's actually possible. So it's yeah. awesome that you're part of that journey for this particular shop. I think that's only a benefit for you. Absolutely. So would, I, would you say, all right, so... I guess maybe this is, I know the answer to this, but I'll ask it anyway. What is the most technology, what is the most interesting technology that you've seen or used so far? 
Oh, the Renishaw machine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to say, because you're, well, you know, let's flip that and go to, because you also have CMM on your title. So what yes. is it about that side? How do those two go together? You know, and what is it about that side of your job that is interesting? So one way that they kind of intertwine is let's say we just printed a uh, an insert for someone, a, some product for someone. So I can take it into my CMM lab. I can set it up on our CMM, bring in the CAD data and see exactly what the printer generated, comparing it from the actual data that's, let's say you're nominal to actual steel and seeing, okay, this point is kicked out a little bit further. So why did that happen? Uh -huh. Or this point is a little bit too far in. What happened? What went wrong? And so that's just kind of one way that okay. these two fields kind of mesh yep. together pretty well. Yep. Um, so it's just mainly the verification side. Okay. Do you get involved with uh, that on just the tool building side that doesn't involve additive? Are you the inspection guy or no, just for the additive? So yeah, if something okay. needs to be CMM'd in the shop, I've CMM'd countless tools, countless okay. molds, die cast, okay. plastic. Um, it's, let's say there needs to be a change done to a tool, an ECI, um, engineering yep. change. Yep. And they say, okay, we wanna move this boss, 20 grand in X. Mm. So we need to know, okay, where is that steel actually at in the tool? Mm. Because nothing is perfect. Yep. Things can be moved. Cutter can be dull. So one thing is we take that steel, we measure it and we find out exactly where it is. And then, so now we have a starting point. So now we know, okay, we can move it this direction, 20 grand. Make sure we know exactly where it's at. And then mm. once they do t make that movement, I can take it back and validate it okay. and say, yes, yes, customer. We moved it exactly what you wanted. I love it. Okay. Now they, they seem like they go together to me. So I wanted to get your take on that. All right. So let's, let's take a look at the future of manufacturing, the next generation, even beyond you. What do you think has got must, has got to change in mold manufacturing to start attracting and retaining that the next generation? I just think it's it's the mindset that needs to change. And it's not that their mindset is bad. It's mm -hmm. not bad at all because they know exactly what they're doing. Right. But they just need to, like you're saying, they need to accept this new technology and utilize it is all. They need to take it and say, oh, well, I can't really get what I need right here Let's go see if it can be printed. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. experiment, yeah. have fun with it, right? Test it. That's I mean, the fun thing. It, it and your action is at such an advantage. Like I think a lot of shops outsource, you know, their inserts. Like, but you actually have the machine to play around with and learn. Plus, you have somebody from the company that used to work at the company. It's just, I don't know. There's such a good formula there that I think yeah. it's it's a little exceptional. But hey. I think that's the rule of thumb is experiment. I mean, even if you're outsourcing it, work with that, collaborate with that shop that might be doing it and get, immerse someone like you to learn that, what it can do. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so here's a big question. Where do you see yourself in five years? Where do I see myself? So I mm -hmm. see myself, I really want to stay in this field. I really, I mean, this is, I am excited to go to work every morning because this is what I've been wanting to do. Um, I see myself getting more involved, getting more education, more advanced into what the additive side of things can actually do and provide. Um, me and my manager have already taken classes on exactly um, to basically develop parameters that actually okay. go into your machine to tell it, okay, machine, fire your laser here, here, here. So it makes this kind of bead. Because basically all additive is, is very advanced welding, if you think yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And so just more, more knowledge is really what I see myself, okay. the biggest kind of thing. That learning, I'm, learning, yeah. right? Yeah. I just want yeah. more. So let me ask you in relation to that, with COVID-19, 
a lot of times or a way to learn is to get out to trade shows, to get to other shops, go to go to Renishaw to learn about, you know, go to their facility. How have you done this the past year? How have you, is it all internal or? So virtual? we had someone from Renishaw come in and actually okay. teach us a class for a week, basically on just what I spoke on the parameter side of things. Okay. After that, um, we basically it was trial and error. Yeah. It, that, I mean, that's really all you can do as of right now because it's such a new field for this industry. Yeah. So you don't know what's out there. There's no papers out there to learn from. There's yeah. no equations or formulas or no. textbooks that say, hey, this is, this is what it does. This is how you do it. It's all new. And so how if exciting you don't is know, that? I know, I know, right? I know, I got a pretty cool <laughs> job. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right, here's my last question. So if you had to look at, we'll say middle school or high school, and you had to sell mold making to that kid, what is your sales pitch as a career? Okay. Um, for mold making, yep. I would go up to a, anyone and say, if you like to make things, if you enjoy the fulfillment of creating something, this is the field for you. If you enjoy being creative and thinking outside the box and getting things done, this is the field for you. And I hope that would be enough. Yeah. Now, so you, you get the hook and they're like, yes, I am. What's the first step for that kid? If they're in high school, what's the first step? I feel like exposure. They, when I was in high school, I got lucky enough to have a co-op where I actually worked out on a floor. Yeah. And that really got me exposed to machines, to how they work, how they run, how you run them safely. Um, and I can tell you right now, if I didn't have that background, that knowledge, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. Yeah. I wouldn't hand, be yeah. doing molds. I'd I agree. be out doing some other engineering practice. But because yeah, of that exactly. experience, that hands-on aspect that I had, it set me it set me apart from a lot of different people, from a lot of other engineers. And so I had another view on things. Yes, you can design it this way, but you can't make it because <laughs> you're trained here. Yes, manufacturability, right? Yep. I love that. I love that that hands-on or putting yourself out there or being assertive to get out in the field younger is setting you apart from other students and other people that might think they're entering the same field as you, right? Like you can take engineering in a whole different way if you think about manufacturing and even specifically mold making. Absolutely. So I agree with you on that. All right, that's it. That's it, Zach. It was great to dig a little deeper into who you are. So I want to say congratulations again for being one of our 30 under 30. Um, and I want to thank you for your time today, spending it with me. Um, <laughs> and this is going to get pushed out soon. It'll get pushed out across our digital channels and social so more people will get to know you. And hopefully hearing your story will encourage other young people to at least um, ask about this field. So again, yeah. thank you and congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate your time. All right. And to everyone watching, remember for everything mold making, go to moldmakingtechnology.com. Stay safe and healthy. And more importantly, stay informed and stay inspired.